Welcome in guys to the midweek update video with the wheel strategy as the name suggests I'm going to update you in the middle of the week what's going on this week Monday and Tuesday is already passed Wednesday is active as we speak we're about uh, one o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time so markets markets going so what's going on are we up are we down and what does it mean for the wheel strategy that is what I'm here to do and I'm here to answer those questions for you so let's get into it Here's a daily chart of the S&P 500, and we are up for the third straight day. This week has all been green. Monday, up over a percent. Tuesday, up 0.6%. Today, up 0.3%. It was a lot better earlier. Go down to the five-minute chart. You can see just uh, the kind of rally we had. And if I actually take a look at the percentage change at its best, we were up 0.8%, almost 1%. Now we're down to 03 So giving back a lot of the, the gain, a lot of the momentum, but it's not over yet. Really, what everyone's waiting for is the Fed, which will be in about an hour. So that's really going to be the big thing. The Fed meets, the rate decision will be made, will we pause, will we hike, will we cut? It's likely going to be a pause. That's what traders are pricing in almost 100%. And the Fed has yet to fail the predictions of investors. So should be a pause, I'm guessing, and what will that mean for the market? There's definitely going to be a lot of volatility, as there always is. There's always an initial reaction, and then uh, a lot of times that reaction might reverse, and then 2.30 comes, Powell starts talking, and then there's a whole new reaction. So it's a very volatile uh, day, but it's going to determine where we end up. I mean, are we going to close red or close green? I predict a pause and a rally. I feel like stocks are poised and, and ready to rally, ready to run, uh, at the like for at least for right now, at least for today. So that's my prediction. This by the time you guys watch this, it, it will already have been done and over with. So you already know if I'm right or wrong. So yeah, but that's where we are right now. It's really going to come down to that. But we are bouncing on the week. We're up over two percent on the week after crashing these past two weeks. And we were down two and a half percent both of the last two weeks. Now we're finally recovering and not surprising because look at how far we dropped. We retraced this massive move. We're looking at the weekly chart, by the way. This mass massive, pretty much straight up move retraced uh, more than 50%. I was looking for the 50% retracement. That would be 4,200. We pulled back all the way down to um, 4,100, just about, just a few points away from 4,100, which ended up being the 0.618% retracement. So that's that's another key level. If you're a Fibonacci fan, that's usually what they look for. Um, the 0.382 is that first zone. That's this red zone. It might work, but generally that's not what traders look for. They usually look for the, the 0.6 or maybe even the halfway mark. The halfway mark isn't actually a Fibonacci level. It's just a good gauge to see what you know halfway would be. But really the, the, the next key point would be the 0.618 if you're interested in Fibonacci. And that's exactly where we hit off of. So, um, and of course, it was just the bottom of this demand zone too, which is what I would really look at more than Fibonacci's is just straight up supply and demand zones. And I said the demand zone would be a big range of about 100 points from 4,200 to 4,100 as it was resistance back here, right here as well. And then we broke out of it. And now I would expect it to be support right here. And we did cut through a lot of it with little hesitation hardly any bouncing at all until we reach the very bottom of the demand zone and now we're soaring out of it up over 100 points from that low so not that surprising but definitely more volatile than i expected so we'll see but this is still a downtrend this is still a downtrend with lower highs and lower lows and now we're bouncing we just created a nice new lower low now we're bouncing maybe that gets us back to 4250 you know maybe so let's actually use the fibonacci quick just to see the retracements that we've been seeing on this downtrend so from this leg lower we retraced up to the 78 percent mark so a bounce we retraced 78 percent of this move before we had a new leg lower 78 percent do it again for this leg lower which would be right here. 
So new leg, we retrace about 50% right here, 50% retracement of the second down leg. So 78%, 50%. Now we take a look at this recent down leg, which would be right here. A 50% retracement of this down leg and maintaining the downtrend would be about 4250, which is actually where I drew my horizontal white line, which is still there. That's where I think maybe we could get to 4250. It was um, resistance right here anyway. So that would be a logical area for this bounce to stop and then roll over to continue the downtrend. If you believe the downtrend will continue, it could go higher than that all the way up to the 61% or the 78% level. The 78% level is where um, this bounce got to up here. Um, and that's, that could be logical because it could push up into this massive bullish trend line, push up into it from underneath it, and it actually rejects and becomes resistance. That could be a, uh, a scenario that plays out. But I'm going to lean more so on the 4250 level, which is the 50% retracement of this new down leg. Um, I do think the market will remain a little bit weak. I'm not ready for this to all of a sudden put in a higher high. I don't think this gets uh, taken out anytime soon. But that doesn't mean we can't rally a little bit higher before uh, moving a bit lower. So that's my prediction. A move up to 4250 and then another rejection back into the demand zone. And hey, we might not make a new low. We might not continue the downtrend, but we just might kind of... This demand zone just might support us. It might try to move lower and show weakness, but the demand zone supports us until we ultimately maybe start to go higher later. So that's what I'm looking at. Market is rallying this week, which is great because I'm holding long positions as you do with the wheel strategy. Short puts, long shares, you want the market to go up generally. So let's take a look at the wheel strategy. Bring up the graphic. I am actually up $15 already. I closed a trade this week and realize some profits that's on Kraft Heinz so we'll talk about that still holding 100 shares of GM 200 shares of CSIQ 100 shares of Kraft Heinz I sold a Devon Energy cash secured put and a Schwab Charles Schwab cash secured put that's what I've done the last two weeks and I'm doing it again this week because it's just at the right level to play it's not it's sticking around that that low level that I like to sell puts around and it's allowing me that opportunity, paying me enough premium to do it. So it's been great so far. But um, yeah, let's just review the positions and then we'll call it a day. So go to GM quick. This one, again, the tr the problem child, the troublemaker, the one that's just not cooperating. There's headwinds with the auto workers strike. Now the strikes do seem to be getting close to being resolved. Ford, they're done with Ford. They're on to GM. I know they're nearing a deal, so that'll be good to just get that out of the way. It'll likely lead to increased costs for the future of the company, as it did with Ford, which isn't the greatest, but it would be nice to just have this thing behind us at this point. Um, we are down a percent today, down at 27.87, which would be a $4.20 loss on my position so far. I have not been able to sell calls on this except one time, which was the first week I got a sign. Other than that, it's been too far down to sell calls. So I'm just sitting on it, just waiting, but it's one fifth of my portfolio. So it's not that big a deal. It's within reason. It's, it's not too expensive. It checked all my boxes. It's just dealing with a little bit of a rough patch right now, which will happen with your positions. Don't give up on them. Don't get scared. If you are scared, that probably means you shouldn't be in the stock based on a number of reasons. Could be too pricey, could be too risky, and you don't actually have the conviction in your heart of hearts that it'll do well. I do with this case, so I'm not worried about it. Moving on to CSIQ. This one I did not sell calls on. This is the first week I've not been able to sell calls because it is not having a great time this week. It tried to push up here on Monday. It tried to push up here on Tuesday, but both times it rejected. Now, we did actually have a green day yesterday, but that's been completely erased today where uh, we're down over 3% back down to levels pretty much where we closed at the end of last week. So we tried to push higher with this one this week, and we're giving up those gains. Not good, but if... If Powell talking today is on the dovish side, or if who knows, they cut rates today, I doubt it, highly doubt it. But if he at least sounds dovish and 
more likely to kind of ease his foot off the gas. I would expect companies like CSIQ to um, to really benefit from that. But right now, it's still struggling. I have 200 shares at $22. My break even's at $20.99. Not that bad. Not too far off from uh, from my cost basis. But unfortunately, just too far away to sell calls. I did have a limit order to sell calls yesterday. And I was on the ask, but it, it didn't push up high enough to get me filled. So just uh, waiting on this one for this week. Kraft Heinz is an important one. This is a big one because, hello, look at this daily chart. It reported earnings today. That's what happened. So it beat EPS estimates. It reported a 72 cent earnings per share versus what was expected to be 65 cents. So it beat estimates there. Revenue actually missed estimates, six and a half billion versus 6.7 billion. Still a lot of friggin' money, but it just missed expectations. So it initially um, did not do well. Initially dropped pre-market. So they reported this morning, had a pop here, and then they were way down here by the time we opened, but there must have been, you know, Kraft Heinz on a ton of volume. So sometimes you can get some weird gaps, especially in the pre-market where there's very little volume. So I guess we had this uh, pretty big gap up right before the open, but you can see we were down a good amount. We were actually red uh, in, the, in, the, in the pre market, so I was not happy about that. But then the market opened and investors were, I guess, cool with buying up Kraft Heinz. So it, it rallied nicely. And now it went all the way up to 33.07, pulled back, now we're about 32.40. I have 100 shares at $32, and right now I have a covered call sold at the 32 mark, which is right at my, right where my uh, cost basis is. So it'd be a break-even trade on the shares if I get assigned, but it would mean I'd profit the entirety of the premium I've collected up to this point. So this week started with me holding calls at the 33 strike. If you watched my last video, you knew. Uh, or you might remember that I already had calls sold on this thing for this Friday at the 33 strike because I had earnings this week. So volatility was high, premiums were elevated. I was able to get a nice out of the money strike for sufficient premium, which is awesome. On Tuesday, Kraft Heinz dropped. I mean, it had a really big spike down all the way down to $31 per share, which meant my covered call was $2 out of the money. And it was still... It still had some juice in it because of earnings still yet to come, but it did decay. And I decided to play the aggressive approach and I rolled down the call. So I took the profit on the 33 strike, which ended up being $15. I sold it for 27 bucks, bought it back for 12, profited 15. And then I opened the 32 covered call for a new round of premium that amounted to 37 cents or $37. So being aggressive like that, the downside is I lose any type of possibility for capital gains, for, for share appreciation, right? Because I sold my call at my cost basis, whereas before I had my call sold above my cost basis. So if I still had the 33 strikes sold and that got assigned, I would make $100 on the shares because I'd be up a dollar per share. But in this case, I rolled it down to the 32, which means I'd make no money on the shares. But the flip side to that is I was able to bring in more premium as a result. So there's always give and take with every trade. That's why they call it a trade. You're giving something to get something. I gave up my ability to make money on the shares, which was only potential, not a guarantee, for the sake of getting more premium, which was guaranteed. That's the thing. Having Kraft Heinz rally up to get me assigned to 33 and make me money on the shares, that's not guaranteed. That might not happen. But the additional premium that I'd get by selling the call at a lower strike was guaranteed. So you got to factor that in. Bird in the hand, two in the bush. So I actually rolled it for an additional 25 cents. $25 basically is, is how much extra I'm making by selling that call aggressively. But I'm giving up the ability to possibly make 100 so $25 guaranteed, $100 potential, which one would you choose? The guarantee of 25 or the possibility to make 100? That's how I that's how I played it. And since the market has been relatively weak, 
I wanted to play the aggressive side, guarantee the premium, guarantee the break-even reduction, uh, because just a lot of the names just haven't been cooperating that well. So I was a little bit pessimistic, if you will. So I, I decided to do that. And it's only Wednesday. Tomorrow, Friday, Kraft Heinz could come down. It's only 44 cents above my, my covered call. So maybe I'd be able to have this call expire worthless in the end. Or maybe I roll it and give it more time for next week. It depends how Kraft Heinz plays out these next couple of days. But this is the situation right now, which I will take. I'm fine not making money on the shares. It's all part of the plan. Um, I, I make sure to collect enough premium along the way to guarantee a acceptable return on investment. So I like to try to make 30% return on these trades. And even if I get assigned and make $0 on the shares, the premium collected up to this point would yield an annualized return of over 30%. So to me, that was a successful deployment of capital. But we'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated later this week. Next, we'll talk about Charles Schwab, which is one that I just sold a cash secured put on, on Monday. And this thing has been rallying with the market. So it's been cooperating, not being not showing weakness to, towards the market. It's been rallying with the market. And I sold the 48.50 strike, which is way down here. Collected 31 cents. If I go down to the 15 minute, you know, on, on Monday, we were right here. On Monday, we sold off near $50. So the 48.50 strike was well within play. I sold it, got a nice premium. That was great. Then later that day, we rallied. And then Tuesday, we rallied a lot. And then today, we're up even more. So this put is decaying a lot. I actually have an exit order to get out of it. Buy it back for 90% capture of the premium, which I'm actually surprised it didn't get filled. Uh, particularly way up here at $53. I don't think it did. Let me just double check. Nope, did not get filled. Did not get filled. Still out there. Um, I'm trying to buy it back for three cents. I sold it for 31. Trying to buy it back for three. That'd be 90% capture of the premium. And the bid is three cents. I'm right there. The bid shows three cents. And I'm on the bid, but just haven't gotten filled yet. I expect if, if Schwab rallies again today and maybe makes a new high, that's the point where I would expect to get filled and have a successful trade. But in any case, I mean, we're over $4 out of the money at this point. So I would expect to, uh, to have a nice successful trade with, with this one, this cash secured put. The other cash secured put is with Devon Energy. I was able to sell the 45 strike on Monday. If we go to Monday, you can see how Devon Energy really kind of crapped the bed and broke the low of Friday. This is Friday's low. On Monday, we started up here and then dropped all the way down. So I ended up getting a cash secured put sold. I've, I've been playing this for three straight weeks because it, it doesn't quite, it moves down slightly, it moves down just enough to let my cash secured puts expire worthless, but yet still be in the vicinity for me to keep selling puts and actually at better strikes. So it's been working out very well. Sold the 45, had a green day Tuesday, gapped up today, coming back down a little bit, but overall pretty flat compared to yesterday. We are $1.50 out of the money. My cash secured put sold at the 45 strike. I got 26 cents for it. Um, and it's looking good. It does report next week. So if I get assigned, then I'd be able to sell pretty nice calls, I would imagine. If I don't get assigned, I will not be playing it next week because of earnings volatility. If I can avoid it, if I have the chance to avoid it, then I might as well just to avoid some of that risk. But if I get assigned this week, then I have really no choice but to accept that risk. But at least I'll be able to sell nice calls. Um, but right now, it's looking pretty good. So that's that. Here's the S&P 500 five-minute chart. We're at 4209, up only 16 points right now. As for the wheel strategy, given the $15 profit I captured earlier and the $94 that I have outstanding and premium collected, I'm on track to, uh, to profit $109 on the week, if all goes well. It might be a little less if I buy back some puts early, but I should be able to make 100 bucks this week with premium collected, which is great. That's kind of my target, 100 bucks a week, 500 bucks a month, something like that. I'm happy with it, and I'm on track to meet that goal for this week. So that's good. Powell will be speaking soon. The Fed will make their decision. What will happen? You guys already know, but I don't. So um, I'm excited. I'm excited.
So that's going to do it for this one. I'm actually not going to be here next week. I'm going on vacation starting Friday. So that means I'm not going to be able to make my next three videos. The weekly recap this week, I won't be here. Midweek update next week, will not be here. Weekly recap next week, still won't be here. So I won't be able to provide videos, but I'm still going to be able to trade the wheel. That's what's great about the wheels. It's very passive, very easy to manage. You know, you you do a couple of trades Monday morning for the whole week and then they're pretty much done. Maybe you put an exit order out there, you leave it good to cancel and just have it going on in the background. It's pretty simple, pretty low maintenance. So it'd be easy to manage it even on vacation. Uh, I, I just won't be able to make videos. I might, um, I might make a, a community post to just give you guys a quick update. Like, hey, you made this much money or got assigned. Whatever happens, I'll give you a quick update. Uh, but I will not be able to make videos for the next week and a half. So just giving you guys a heads up there. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all next time.